So let's start with sitting. <clears throat> and make sure you make lots of adjustments to find those sit bones. It just depends on uh, leggings and surface and the whole of the rest of the body, actually. If you're holding any, anything in a shoulder or in a hip um, or even in your neck, it can adjust um, your lean. So let's try to get rid of any lean. And we start off with focusing on the sit bones for that, so dropping down nice and evenly right between the two sit bones. And eyes closed. And a little settle into where you are right now. So give yourself a move or two or three. And what can that look like? Well, it looks like you tapping into doing what feels right for you. So hopefully you've got your eyes closed. I am rolling my shoulders around, wiggling in my spine a little, still keeping the crown of the head up towards the ceiling. And this, of course, what you need to do feels like moving your neck and your head, in which case go ahead and do that. Just a little bit of movement. Connecting quite firmly with those sit bones and then everything else just settling. So give yourself a little shake, a little wiggle. Take that from your knees and thighs. Bring it up all the way through the body. Just a little bit of a jiggle and a move of the whole body. Just very gently. Nothing terribly dramatic. And then opening your eyes again. Looking forward, then looking down, allowing your chin to come to your chest and your gaze to be tucked down and inwards as well. So looking down towards your cheeks. So try and keep that spine nice and long, but at the same time we want to get a stretch. So quite a relaxed, long spine here. Chin to chest. And eyes looking down quite firmly. And see if you can look down a little, little lower. As if you're looking down into the roof of your mouth or trying to see your chin. And release your eyes. Bringing your chin up now. We're going to take chin all the way up. So go up with your chin towards the ceiling, let your head drop back, shoulders relaxed, elbows and hands relaxed. And this time look up to your eyebrows. So rolling your eyes up and back, almost into the back of your skull. As far back as they will go. Try to keep your eyebrows neutral here. Forehead completely neutral, just those eye muscles. Sending your chin up towards the ceiling. Nice deep stretch in the throat, in the front of the body, into the front of your neck, into the top of your chest. Still looking up with your eyes, but isolating, not bringing the forehead into this movement. And release, release your chin, bringing your head slowly back to center, bringing your gaze back so your eyes are looking forward. And we're going to take chin over to the right shoulder, and I think you can probably guess what's coming next. As your chin goes over your right shoulder, firmly turning the whole of your head so the right ear goes to the back. You're also going to gaze around. So looking around as if you're trying to see your right ear. Now, if you have not done many eye exercises or maybe not done them recently, this can feel really tiring, bizarrely enough. Go for it, make it feel tiring. Stare around. 
all those muscles around your eyes doing the same thing day in, day out. Give them a little bit of a wake up, a little bit of a change. Looking around to the right. Shoulders both relax, relax your elbows, relax your upper arm. Relax your belly. Are you holding your breath? Breathe nice and deeply and slowly. And release. Let go of your eyes. Let go of the head. All the way around now to the left. So that counter pose should feel really lovely. And of course, looking around towards your left ear as well. Crown of the head still lifting up. You might need to adjust a little in the lower back there. Give yourself a little more length in the spine. Are you grabbing hold with your fingers? Let your palms be soft. Your face is in a line. It's not tilting at all, either left or right. It's just that left ear going behind and the eyes following. Look round, look round, look round. Keep breathing, relax your hands, relax your feet, relax your belly. Breathing in through your nostrils. And as you breathe out, let's release. And it can feel quite strong in the neck. So if you feel like doing a few very gentle neck and head rolls, go ahead and do that now. It might be better to do a half roll to the front. You're allowing your chin to come down and round. And then a couple of half rolls at the back. Nice warm up neck, top of the chest and the top of your back. We're going to come from here into our seated asanas. And then we'll move about halfway through to our standing asanas. We're going to start out with Buddha Konasan. So bringing the soles of your feet together, letting your knees drop out. So start very relaxed here. We'll push a little in a moment, but just bring your feet to wherever they feel like being, wherever your knees are comfortable. Hold on and upright, nice and tall. So we're going to use Buddha Konasan as our position to do a little bit of breath work. If Buddha Konasan is not comfortable for you, then find another position, maybe Sukhasan, easy cross leg pose, um, or you might want to bring them out into staff pose. Ooh, straight out in front of you. I'm obviously not breathing enough here. So good, we're just in time for some breath work. So finding that comfortable space and comfortable is like most things in a spectrum of extremely comfortable and Kind of manageable. Um, so find your space there that works for you. So up, <clears throat> long in the spine again. We won't be here for a very, very long time, but we'll be here for long enough. If you get uncomfortable, change the position of your legs. We're going to be breathing in and out just through the nostrils. So close your mouth gently, softly. And let's breathe in and out. If, like me, you've just had a lurgy, carry on that breath now, then, um, and breathing in and out through your nostrils is not comfortable for whatever reason, try to breathe in through your nostrils and you're welcome to breathe out through your mouth. Otherwise, just nostrils for now. Controlling the breath, but not to any great extent. But as you're on full, on that full breath, just pause a moment on full before you empty the breath. You're slowing everything right down. And the same at the bottom of that breath when you're completely empty. A little pause on empty before you breathe in again. So it's almost a four part breath. Breathing in. Hold, you're breathing out, you hold, and then you repeat. 
go at your own pace and just notice what feels comfortable for you. Sometimes we need more breaths. Sometimes we're able to breathe deeper than others. Well then, do two more rounds. See if you can breathe a little deeper. Sometimes because of the way we're sitting, we have a little bit more tension in the body. It's harder to breathe in and out. Just noticing all those little things. You start thinking, wow, well, I could breathe much deeper if, if I was sitting a different way. Just sitting with that observation. I'm going with the breath. Well done. So we're going to stretch the legs out now. So taking the right leg out, keeping that left leg in for the moment. See if you can push your heel down into the mat, let your knee come up and feel as if you're really pressing down into that heel as hard as you possibly can, engaging the thigh, engaging the whole of that leg before then gently pressing the whole of your leg down into the mat, extending that foot out and allowing your toes or drawing your toes back towards you. So we're really pressing down. Feel that calf pressing into the mat. Feel your thigh, back of your thigh pressing in. And even perhaps the underside of your knee. So pressing down, keeping this left leg in. We're just going to slide down. Use the opportunity to have a little bit of side bend. So right arm down your right leg, all the way down towards your foot, wherever you're hand will get to, and then left arm up, opening up. So just stay with your hand up towards the ceiling for now. This is our first side bend. You might feel this quite strongly in your hip and in your side. And if you can, turning to look up at your outstretched left hand up towards the ceiling. Notice what's happening in that left leg, your bent leg. Is it trying to move or are you able to keep it down on your mat? You want to have a sensation of opening up under the arm. So even though we are in the side stretch, we also want to be reaching up, opening up under that left arm. You might find you have a bit more reach over to the right, maybe even bringing your right forearm down and then lifting up. Lifting up to come out, all the way down. We're going to take the left leg out. And the same again. Pressing down, you might want to bring that right leg in because we're going to do the same side stretch. So maybe bring the right leg in first so we can focus fully on the left. Pressing that left heel down. Notice how that wakes everything up in your leg. You might even find some kind of movement going on in your core, well, contraction probably of the core and those core muscles. So press, 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 press. And then allow your leg to stretch out. And then we're pressing the whole of the back of that leg down into the mat. Toes coming back towards the face, up nice and tall. And we're going into our side, side bend. And opening up on the right side. So leaning onto the left, reaching into the right. And don't forget we're reaching up and still breathing in and out gently through our nostrils. And out through our mouth this time. So in through the nostrils, out through the mouth. Looking up to that extended right hand and arm. Leaning over to the left, pressing your right knee out to the side and opening up under your right arm.
I don't know about you, but I can really feel this in the tops of my hips. Hopefully you can too. Squeezing into the left here. Extending onto the right and lifting up. Coming out nice and slow. And now let's take both legs out. So both legs extended out. Experiment a little bit with how far back they will come, how wide you can get that stretch. Just go to where is comfortable for you. To the point where that's it. Beyond that point, it becomes uncomfortable. But don't go to the point where you feel like, oh, I still got quite a bit more that I could stretch. I hope that makes sense. You know what I mean. So hands forward, bring your hands to the mat and a little bit of a lean forward. Keep your spine straight. So we're going to be bending forward. It's not a huge movement. But the movement is with the whole of your back. We're not just rounding in the mid back and the upper back. We want the lower back to be moving forward as well. And that is where you will feel that beautiful stretch right in on the inside edge of your thighs, right into the psoas muscles, and a good stretch of the sartorius as well. So long muscles getting a really good stretch here. Think about your heels, pressing them into the mat. Notice what's happening with your feet. Perhaps they are folding inwards. Perhaps you can keep them upright. Just noticing there's no good, bad, and definitely no ugly. It's just all beautiful body movement and noticing what you're doing. Isn't it amazing how that tiny little movement intensifies the stretch so much? Hopefully you can feel both sit, sit bones, not sit phones, sit bones on the mat equally here. If you can't, try and figure out why that is. Maybe you are slightly leaning to one side. Maybe one leg is stronger than the other. Maybe one hip is a little more open than the other. Just noticing. We become the body expert, incredibly observant, and that translates into every day. You're much more likely to look after your body in your everyday life when you have this extra layer of observance, if that's even a word, um, and awareness of your own body, what it can do, what it's challenged by, and where you feel you would like more strength or more flexibility to help you in your everyday life. And let's push away now. So gently pushing into the hands, coming back. And then we're bringing the legs forward into Dandas and staff pose. So legs straight out in front of you. Again, any adjusting that needs to be done, do that. Sitting up nice and tall. And we're going to bring the arms in with this next breath. So arms will come up to the sides and out, stretching out and reaching out on your inhale. On your exhale, you're folding forward. In the quiet space between breaths, bring your hands back to the side. And then in the next inhale, we move again. We pause here for a moment and exhale. Moving it to the sides. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. Out to the sides. Inhale. Hold and exhale with force. Bring yourself forward, squeeze that breath out. As you open up and you inhale, opening up, stretching out the front of the body, a little bit of a lean backwards as well. And then as you exhale, letting it all out. Last two here.
And this time we're going to do the same movement, but not with the breath quite so much. Just holding forward and then we're going to breathe and stay here in Paschimottanasana. So with Paschimottanasana, we are stretching through the lower back, back, through the hips, through the backs of the legs, all the way around and to the soles of your feet. If you bring your toes back towards your face, you're improving that stretch in its ability to reach other parts of your body. So even to the toes, you'll probably notice that your Achilles wakes up a little when you add your toes into the mix there. And then allowing your head to drop. Close your eyes, relax. And let's hold here for a few breaths together. As always, as you breathe in through your nostrils, allowing yourself to expand, to make space in your chest, to come away from your legs. And as you exhale, either noisily through your mouth, or through your nose, whichever works best for you. Folding forward, tucking in. Last breath here, and we will start to do a little bit more moving. Throughout your practice today, I encourage you to move with your breath. Notice where it feels better to be breathing in, where it feels better to be breathing out. And just be observant. Well done. Coming all the way up now. We're going to come into Navasana. I should turn sideways. Look at that. Rain, 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 rain. So we are very appropriately in our boat. Doesn't look like it's going to stop raining anytime soon. So maybe it's an arc. So holding on, let give yourself a chance to really straighten your back, take your shoulders back. Maybe lift your feet a little. Come to where works for you. So individual. Every asana is individual, but Navasana is definitely one where you know what's right for you, for your back your hips. So we've got that lovely Navasana and now we're going to start releasing the hands and releasing the arms. Switching the core on. As soon as I take my hands off I want to round my back, I want to curl in because that would just be so much easier. So try, if that's you as well, try to guard against that one, bringing your knees together, ankles together. Holding. Well done. Try and keep some distance in the front of your body. So we've got some length there. And then we're curling and tucking in. So try to keep your feet off the ground if you can. Curling your head and neck round. Stretching out in the back of your neck. Try to relax your shoulders here. You should feel quite a strong stretch in the back of your neck and the top of your back. Then we're going to come into a revolved Navasana. How does that work? Very simple. We're coming back into a Navasana. We'll go quite quickly in because we're already there. Hands to the side, floating to the side. And then we're taking our hands and our arms out to the side. Nice open twist, left arm coming out behind, the right arm can maybe fold across the body and you can keep it out to the front. And looking around to that left hand as we're twisting around to the left. And then coming back to center, nice and slow, bringing your knees in again. And tuck your head down and your chin down if you wish, or stay upright if that feels more comfortable. Whatever works, whatever you feel you need. 
and then we'll always go for the opportunity to stretch out those two lovely long muscles either side of the spine. Your erector spinae, spinae. And of course we're gonna do the other side. So set yourself up, come into your Navasana again. Take a nice deep breath and then let's open up to the right now. So right arm going out, left arm opening up to the side or coming across your chest, whatever you feel like doing. Don't forget, knees together, ankles together. Trying to keep your back straight here. Try not to twist your legs. Breathe. And coming back. Well, one last hug in. And let's come into a squat because we're coming back. We're coming back. We're coming up to standing. We haven't been up standing yet. So let's be up standing shortly, but let's be squatting for now. So come into your comfortable squat, whatever that is for you. Allow your hips to just settle easily and happily, hopefully. So a little bit of rocking here. If you are up on toes, then you are working on moving your heel down towards the mat. So you are lifting up even further onto your toes. You might need your fingers here for balance and slowly moving your heels down. It doesn't matter if they don't go all the way down to the ground. If you are already down on the heels, then you're rocking forward and just closing that little angle between your tops of your shins and the tops of your feet. And also at the same time, stretching out the Achilles in the back of your ankles. So many little bones in our feet and in our hands, and so many connections. See all those tendons and ligaments and little bits of muscle. It's very important to keep them all nicely moving and everything well lubricated, especially through the winter in the UK with feet in socks and shoes. So it's like they're bandaged up all the time. Uh, lots of nice movement in the feet, lots of bare foot if you can in your house. And if you can't be barefoot because it's cold, at least just socks and not shoes or slippers and not shoes. There we go. And we're going to be coming up to standing in a nice easy forward bend. So keep your chest and torso stuck to your thighs here. So nicely welded together, lifting your bottom up into the air, head tipping down, relax your head and neck. Come to wherever you can with your torso still welded to the tops of your thighs. Allowing your head and neck to hang, your shoulders and your arms to hang freely and completely relaxed. And then start to straighten your legs. Let's allow our backs, our spines to settle and enjoy being in an inversion for a moment before we start moving again. Let's allow blood flow to sort itself out. If you feel it's so inclined, you can do a gentle rock from side to side. Try to keep your head and neck completely relaxed. If you have any discomfort around your sternum, stretch your chest forward and down. Just lengthening through the sides of your body and lengthening through the front as well. Deep, slow breaths here. Really take your time with each breath. Mm. 
And now we're ready for some good hip work here, slowly uncurling. Here we go. So we are going to have some fun here, fun with hips, fun with thighs, hip and thigh series. So take your legs nice and wide. Let's start off with Prasarita Padrasana just to get things warmed up. So we are wide legs here. Give your hips a rock from side to side. So taking them over to the right, taking them over to the left. A little bit of a warm up for what's to come. I'm making it sound frightening. It's going to be so much fun. Just over to each side. And then let's turn to face the right side. So right leg extended out in front, left leg behind. We are just going to come into a lovely low lunge. So all the way down, taking that back knee down to the ground, releasing your back leg, so the left leg there, right leg. Check to just see that your right ankle is under your right knee. And we're fairly upright here. I've got hands on my hips just to make sure that they're level and they're not out of line. So if you can feel your hip bones, it gives you a very good sense of if you're in the right place or not. So quite a high lunge here. We're going to make it into a lower lunge. Just walking that front foot away. Allowing yourself to come into your deepest lunge. Now, hands on hips is quite good because it makes you have to do quite a lot of work. If you wish to, you can bring your hands onto that front thigh, the right thigh, if that feels helpful for you. What I'd love you to do is to feel like you're pushing that floor away with your right foot. So push the floor away. And notice what changes for you, whether you get any change in sensation in the opening of the left foot, whether your right thigh becomes more engaged. So lovely, lovely, lovely stretch, but quite an easy, relaxed one. And we're going to do exactly the same on the other side, but we're going to stay facing this way. Take your hands down to the mat. Release that right leg back towards the left. Tuck your toes under, send yourself up into downward facing dog. So here's a wonderful opportunity to notice the difference in sensation between each leg, they've both been doing something a little different. Just notice what feels more stretched, what feels like it's been working on your right versus your left, left versus your right. Pushing the floor away with your hands. Make sure you've got lots of lovely space between your shoulders and you're sending your hips up towards the ceiling. So we're lengthening through the backs of the legs. Breathing in nice and slow and deep. And as you breathe out, settling and relaxing into each asana, just that little bit more. Now looking to your hands, raising your left leg up behind you and then pulling your knee in, flicking that foot forward and coming into lunge on the opposite side. So release the right foot now, and then bring yourself up. And again, we're just finding where we want to be here. So hips in line, move your foot forward, just to make sure that your knee is roughly above your ankle. Right foot out behind. <laughs> And allowing yourself to sink down, taking your hips down towards the mat. Still remembering those lovely, steady, even breaths. 
using up the whole of your lungs. Really taking advantage of all your breathing apparatus to the max. Last breath here. And then hands back down to the mat, taking your left leg to join the right. And this time we're coming into a plank. It's a nice strong plank. Set yourself up so that your wrists are under your shoulders or directly below. Your feet are strong, your calves are engaged. Your belly button is tucked up towards your spine and your shoulders are broad. Lift your neck and your head a little so that they are in line. And here we're going to push back. So push the backs of your heels away from you and then allow yourself to rock forward backwards and forwards. Let's make this quite a fast movement. Nice strong shoulders, nice strong arms here. Last five, four, three, two, and one. Sending your bottom up into the air again, coming to downward facing dog. Now, if your wrists are feeling a little like they've had a workout here. We want to take the hips away. So we're drawing away from your wrists. Push your knuckles into the mat and your fingers. Take that strain and stress off your wrists if there is any. Shoulders wide. Heels down towards the mat, stretching out into the backs of your legs. Try not to collapse your chest down. We want everything to be strong. And we're looking forward to hands and we're stepping the right foot forward. So lift up at the back, bring that knee in, flick your foot forward, and we're coming all the way up into triangle. So our lovely triangle, we need our toes on the right to be pointing to the narrow end. Left foot, let it come into a three quarter. Um, it'll find its own path. Don't worry about your left foot. Right foot is the one that we're going to be focusing on. Arms out. So we need a nice open chest. Just have a little bit of a wiggle, make sure everything's nice and open. Looking over to the right, and we're going to lean right, stretch right, all the way as far as we possibly can, and then a gentle tilt all the way down. Use your right hand on the inside edge of your right leg to gently press. This allows you to bring your shoulders much more in line so they're stacked. It allows this right upper arm to be engaged so that you can use the whole of your arm strength to make sure that you are straight and not folding forward. We don't want you to be slumping around or folding forward. Just lovely and open and strong here. And you don't have to be bent right over. It's more, more important that you have a nice open chest here. And it's tricky because of what we're doing with our legs. So it's not a, looks like a simple asana. It isn't, it really isn't. Well done. Try not to lock your legs. If you feel that they are locked at the knee, just give them a little bit of a release. You'll notice instantly that you're switching muscles on, that we're having a little rest. And then let's come out. So we're gonna lift up and out. Well done. Keep your arms up. Let's make them do a little bit more work. And let's just change the angle of the feet. 
So right foot now has a little bit of a relax and left foot toes are pointing towards the narrow end of your mat. Looking to the left, neck long, head lifted, and then we're going to reach. So reaching over to the left as far as you can. And then we do our lovely tilt. Again, don't lock your knees. Doesn't matter if you've got a little bit of a wobble there or a little bit of a shake. It's better than having your knees locked into position. And opening up if you can. A little more, making sure that your shoulders are above each other. Or your right shoulder is above your left shoulder, to be a little bit more precise. Right arm lifting up. And it's not for everyone, but if it's for you, you can look up towards your extended left, right arm even. Just trying to confuse things with my lefts and rights. You feel that stretch in your hip. And hopefully you can feel that lovely strength in your legs. And then we're going to be lifting up. So lift, coming all the way up. Arms still wide, bringing both feet facing forwards. Make sure that your hips are kind of in the middle again now. And then we're going to fold forward. So arms are still wide. Coming into your version of Prasarita Padotasan, lift your kneecaps, straighten your back. So we're flying forwards and fold. Allow yourself to come down, drop your arms, drop your shoulders, lengthen your neck, let your heavy head stretch your neck and throat out for you in a very relaxed and gentle way. Bending slightly in the legs, getting that lock away. Allow your head to be heavy. Well done. Relax here for a moment. And then we are slowly going to uncurl to come up. So you're going to need some Strength and power here in your legs as you gently uncurl. Well done. We're going to come into a revolved triangle now. We're not done with triangle yet. So right foot, take your toes into pointing towards the narrow end of your mat. And we're going to turn to face your extended right leg. And this time, the left arm will go down, right arm will come up. Revolve triangle. A little bit of balance required here. If you're finding it hard to balance, you can take your hand down to the mat. Otherwise, use the back of your left hand on the outer edge of your right leg to give yourself a little bit more twist should you want to need it. Remembering to breathe evenly and deeply, as deeply as you can in this position. And then all the way up and round. Change your position if you like. Spinning. Spinning, windmilling. What's the right word? Turning, perhaps, it's just the simplest. And then coming into your revolved triangle, bringing the right hand on the outer edge of your left leg, opening your shoulders up. 
a really good twist inside your body. That's what's happening now. A little bit of a demand on the legs for balance and strength. Try not to lock your knees. If you really want to challenge yourself, you can look up to your left arm, up in the air there. I'm not going to because I suspect I might actually just fall over. Take a bit to breathe. And release. Stay low this time, bringing yourself round to the front between your legs. Taking your knees out to the side now, bending your knees. So we are our legs are in a prasarita padotasan. Body is low, you're supporting yourself on your hands, and bend your knees in goddess. So we're bringing the hips low, low to the ground. Press your hands into the mat. Push them down as if you were doing a handstand. So you're completely supported by your legs, but try and take as much weight as you possibly can into your hands and your arms. Keeping your hips low. And now start to straighten your legs, keeping your hands pressed firmly onto the floor, onto the mat putting as much weight as you can into your hands and arms. Really leaning into them. They are strengthening those muscles in your shoulders. If you are working up towards doing handstands, this is a great way to start. And then bringing yourself back Closing in, walking your feet in towards each other, bringing yourself into a very lovely tabletop position. So just bending the knees, adjusting where you need to. Wrists under your shoulders, knees under your hips, cat-cow combination, chakravakasana. Taking your belly down towards the mat now. We've done quite a lot of work in the hips. We want to be just relaxing the whole of the spine with this lovely wave-like asana, moving into cat and moving into cow. So move at your own pace, use your breath. We breathe out as we curl in. We breathe in as we open up. The asanas that we've just been doing, keep moving, move with each breath. Really put quite a lot of stretch into the lower back, into the hips, into the, the whole pelvic area and the tops of your thighs. Well, the whole thigh really. So bringing this little bit of counter pose, a little bit of spine movement in at this stage can feel really wonderful. Especially as we've opened up a lot in the hips. Now we can move things around in the rest of the body. Let's go for two more. And when you've finished your two, bringing your big toes together, bring your knees together if you wish, or keep them slightly apart, sending yourself into Balasana. We've done a lot of movement today, a lot of um, quite strenuous movement for the hips and thighs and back. And your arms come into a lovely rest. So you may have noticed that we held quite a few of the postures 
for perhaps a bit longer than we normally would have. Just notice how you feel about that, whether you even noticed, <laughs> whether you like holding asanas for longer, whether you feel a sense of frustration that creeps in, just noticing everybody's different. Allowing yourself to settle. And ease. Feeling that pressure, hopefully, on your forehead as your forehead rests into the mat, allowing your neck and your spine to rest. And gently drawing yourself all the way up. Nice and slowly uncurling, bringing your legs around in front of you, making sure that you have enough space to roll down to your mat. Keep your knees pulled in. So we're still pretty much in that nice balasan posture. We've just done a, a flip. A slow, gentle flip, but a flip all the same. And let's have a little bit of a rock from side to side. Massaging just across the lower back into the hips. And taking your arms out now into a T. Take your knees over to the right. When your knees are settled, bring your face and head turned over to the opposite direction, so to the left. You should hopefully be able to settle into a relaxed version of this twist. If you feel like you're holding on in the muscles in your back or in your legs, adjust where your legs are. It might be that you need to be need to have your knees less bent. Just straighten your legs out a little. Find your comfort in this posture. We want to be relaxed enough for all the muscles that are holding on tightly to be able to just rest and relax and let go and feel comfortable enough to do that. Now bringing your head back to center, bringing your knees, skimming across all the way over to the other side. And again, bringing that twist all the way up into the back of your neck. And moving your head around to the right. Notice if you're holding on to any tension in your shoulders or your belly or your legs and try to let go. Try to find maybe the little changes that you need to make in your position to enable you to relax into the posture. We want to allow the spine to be completely at ease. Still breathing evenly, comfortably, but with attention, conscious breath. Bringing yourself back to center now. Head first, then knees. Give yourself a hug, well done. Squeezing your thighs into your chest. Try to relax your shoulders. And bringing your forehead up to your knees if you feel like it. 
And then let's come into Shavasana. So find your comfort, find what you need. Maybe it's a pair of fluffy socks. Maybe it's adjusting your clothing, your hair. Maybe you need something warm. Close your eyes, start to find where you are comfortable here. Make space between your arms and your body. Have your palms facing up towards the ceiling. Allow your legs to be completely at rest. Let your feet drop out to the sides. Take some deep, slow breaths here and notice how that feels. As you breathe in, how does it feel on your back? Around your lower back and to the sides of your body. As you breathe out, allowing everything to soften and relax and let go. Sinking into your mat. Allowing the ground, the floor, the earth to hold you, to support you. Taking your attention to your breath, noticing each breath, the quality of that air as it comes in through your nostrils down into your throat and chest. Notice the change in sensation in your belly as your diaphragm moves, as it contracts and relaxes with each cycle of breath. As you breathe in, notice that you are breathing in light and warmth and energy with each breath. And as you breathe out, a sense of relief, of letting go, making space. As we move through our practice and we move our lymph, we move our circulation, we move all the different fluids of the body around. We unblock, we readjust, we open, we stretch. We make so much space. And in that movement, in that gentle movement of waves within the body, everything is pushed around, woken up a little. Any matter that needs to be expelled from the body will come out through the breath. Through the skin, through our organs, specially designed to take care of all the waste, the kidneys, the liver. So as you relax here, have a sense that as you breathe out, you are releasing out, letting go of anything you no longer need to hold on to. Anything your body, your mind, your spirit no longer needs. With each inhale, feeling a little lighter, feeling a little brighter, feeling things soften and ease with every out breath. Finding a little more peace, a little more depth, sinking into that space that you've created for yourself. Bring your attention to your breath now. Taking a deep breath in. As you exhale, coming to lie on your right side. Good. 
turning around. And with an inhale and an exhale when you're ready, coming up to sitting. So keeping that space by keeping your eyes closed, coming up to sitting however is comfortable for you. On your next out breath, bringing your hands to heart center, bringing your chin to your chest. Allowing your head to be heavy, your neck to be strong and long. On an inhale, gently opening your eyes. On an exhale, raising your head all the way back up, nice and slow and gentle. And namaste. Thank you very much for joining me, joining you on your practice. And uh, yeah, have a wonderful week.